The bid for initiative determines who takes the first turn, and the winner gains intel advantage and the opportunity to attempt to increase their cyber rate. Let's explore each of these mechanics a little further. In the bid for initiative, each player will roll 1d4. The player with the higher number now gains initiative and has an intel advantage and may move their intel track marker to advantage on the board. Reroll any ties until there is a single winner. The winning player will then determine who will take the first turn during that ATO. Each side starts with a cyber rate of 1. The player with initiative will then roll one die. If the value is at or greater than the next cyber access value listed on the board, they may then increase their cyber rate by one. Players can also increase their cyber rate using specific enabler cards during ATO gameplay. Achieve a cyber rate of four and you win the game instantly. Now, both players will roll to determine how many of their opponent's enabler cards they may see before that ATO. The player with an intel advantage will roll two dice and choose the higher number while the other player will only roll one. Players may then choose one enabler card to withhold from view regardless of the dice rolls and show their opponent the number of enabler cards up to the number of the dice roll. Then. Players will conduct a series of actions each turn until either one player has all tokens and squadrons eliminated or when both players choose to pass or are unable to conduct future attacks. At the end of the ATO, any surviving tokens or squadrons will return to their respective players and may be used in subsequent ATO cycles unless their squadron card has been destroyed. The overall game ends once all ATO cycles are complete, as dictated by the campaign selected. At that time, each player will reveal their mission card and tally their victory points. The player with the most victory points wins the game. Now that we have a baseline understanding of the rules, let's dive into explaining how each turn works. Each turn begins with a choice as to whether to play a single enabler card or to hold them for future use. This step is not required as the best strategy may be to wait for forces to become available or game board conditions to change. Remember, some enabler cards can be played at any time regardless of whose turn it is. Once you have either taken the actions directed on the card or declined to play an enabler card, you may now choose from one of two options. The first option is to generate forces from their basic location according to the squadron card. Players may only generate one squadron each turn. Importantly, some squadrons specify a band where the squadron must deploy its tokens, while others allow more flexibility to incorporate player strategy. When a squadron is generated, the squadron card is turned over and becomes visible to the opponent. The tokens are then deployed to the appropriate range band and placed face down. We will have more on this later. If a blue player is generating from the contingency location, they must now roll one die to determine how many tokens will generate. If the number on the die is lower than the number of assets in the squadron, the remaining tokens will stay grounded for the duration of the ATO and remain vulnerable to attack. Should you choose to generate a squadron at your primary airbase or contingency location, your turn is now over. If you do not decide to generate forces, you may now choose to conduct some or all of a move acquire shoot sequence. These steps may be conducted in any order. Let's break each action down a little further. The move step allows a player to move one token. To move a token, first examine the token's move range listed with the move icon. This is the upper limit of how many range bands that token may move during that turn. Then, move the token the desired amount of range bands on the game board. After one token is moved, the move step is complete. The next possible action is to acquire unidentified aerial targets for future attack. 
For this, a player must first examine the acquiring asset's range, any potential modifiers, and the number of rolls by looking at the acquiring asset's game token. Then, the player will roll one or two dice to attempt to acquire the new target. If the number rolled exceeds the number listed on the back of the targeted token, that token is now acquired and will be flipped over to expose it to future attacks. Advanced and stealth aircraft offer unique challenges for acquisition, so consider leveraging these assets during gameplay. After one attempt to acquire an asset, or two for a limited number of high-value aerial tokens, the acquire step is over for that turn. The final step during the move acquire shoot sequence is to shoot either a ground or acquired aerial target. For this step, players must first determine the attacking token's capabilities as listed on the face of the token. Some tokens may only be used to target air tokens, others only ground tokens or squadrons and some have the capabilities to attack both types of tokens. Next, determine the range limits of the attack also listed on the token. Lastly, players will choose an enemy token within the identified attack's limits and roll one or two dice to conduct the attack. For aerial attacks, if the number rolled meets or exceeds the value listed inside the die icon on the attacking asset's token, then the enemy token is destroyed and is removed from the board for scoring. Importantly, aerial targets must first be acquired before they can be attacked. The number rolled for attack is also used to determine if the attacking asset remains available for future attacks or if it no longer has ammunition and must return to base at the beginning of the next turn. Tokens that are out of ammunition are determined to be Winchester and are identified on the board by placing a blue cube on the token or turning the token sideways. For all assets except the attack UAS, the token will only have ammunition for future attacks with a dice roll of 4 for the attack. Any die rolls less than four drive the token Winchester. For attack UAS tokens, any die rolls less than three drive the token Winchester and force it to return to base prior to the next turn. Winchester tokens may still be targeted for points prior to their return to base. If airborne tokens are Winchester and their squadron card has been destroyed at the airbase or contingency location, then the Winchester token reverts to enemy control for scoring instead of returning to base. All destroyed tokens and reverted tokens will not regenerate for the rest of the game and may not be used in future ATO cycles unless an appropriate enabler card is played. For ground attacks, the same attacking and Winchester rules apply. The key difference is that attacking tokens with an exploding die icon will roll again after the attack to determine the amount of damage to ground tokens or squadrons. Advantage or disadvantage rules do not apply for damage rolls unless missile defense is employed or the appropriate enabler card has been played. Then, players will indicate levels of damage to ground targets by placing one cube on the board for each number rolled. When a ground token or card has been destroyed, it is removed from the board for scoring. If the squadron card includes tokens that have not been generated, the tokens are also removed for scoring. Striking units before they generate can be challenging but offers the potential for high rewards. Aerial assets that do not have exploding die icons can only inflict one damage point to any ground unit. Missile defense plays a crucial role in this game and is used most often for ground attacks. Tokens capable of missile defense can engage attacks that enter their weapon engagement zone. This alters the probability of hits and damage rolls, adding an extra layer of strategy. Players must select missile defense squadrons before the ATO or employ sea-based missile defense tokens using enabler cards during the game. To employ its effects, defending players must have generated the squadron, 
during a prior turn and declare missile defense before any attack rolls. Both the attack roll and damage roll, if applicable, are now at disadvantage. Missile defense tokens and squadrons are also vulnerable to ground attacks, but do not go Winchester. In addition to defending against attacks, some missile defense tokens also have the ability to acquire targets within their identified range during a move-acquire-shoot sequence.